My name is Katherine Golmert and I'm running for judge, position number three, Lewis County. Um, what makes me unique amongst the other candidates is that I didn't go to law school right after college. I worked first and one of the places I worked at was a retail organization and in that capacity I introduced to our employees the Americans with Disabilities Act. And that really showed me how laws affect general population and workforce and some of the fears people had about it and how to express what it is as far as a purpose of a law. And in that case, anybody can be a member of that protected class at any time, permanently or maybe just for a period of time, and what the accommodations are for to assist people to be able to live full lives even if they have a disability. So what I bring is that common sense human experiences to the position. I've been a prosecutor, I've been a defense attorney, all different levels, the hardcore felonies to the simple misdemeanors, juvenile and adult. I've done elder law, family law, mental health hearings, mental health court, and all of those experiences. I've sat across from parents, clients, who are facing life-altering situations. I understand what the court is looking for from the attorneys. I know how hard it is as an attorney to get the information out for your client. And all of those factors make me a compassionate listener as well as qualified to serve. So I believe I'm qualified, I'm willing, and I'm wanting to serve this community as a judge. Thank you. Um, we'll start with a familiar question, I think. Uh, drug court and the new mental health alternative have been mm -hmm. praised by many at the courthouse. Um, explain your stance on the general topics of incarceration versus rehabilitation and how your past experiences will inform your approach as a judge. Well, I have done drug court both as a, a prosecutor and defense for juvenile in both uh, Lewis, or all three places, Lewis County, Jefferson County, and Callitz County. Callitz County is where I did the juvenile drug court. But in Jefferson County and Lewis County, I was part of the drug court process, and I have seen it work just almost miracles on families in their lives when it works. And it, it worked very well under Judge Hall, and I would pattern myself under how Judge Hall ran that court. I also have done mental health court in Callitz County. It's already up. It's been up for a couple of years. And it, it's also successful. And, and what it brings together is an opportunity for someone to have a chance to get their lives back and it really impacts their families and everybody who's associated with them and yet it has that hammer of and if you don't take advantage of this opportunity you will be going to prison and you will be there for a very long time so it's it's tough and the team concept of having treatment along with Department of Corrections the prosecutor and then they're always represented by counsel brings together I think a unique opportunity for individuals in drug court, mental health court, it's, it's a problem in every county I've worked in. Excellent, thank you. Uh, what single job or experience, and the emphasis is on single, so we're looking mm -hmm. for an example, uh, most prepares you for the job of Superior Court Judge? What single experience? Mm -hmm. hmm. And as a lawyer, of course, I'm going to argue with you. I don't think there's any one experience that makes a good judge. I think the um, person wearing the black robe has to have a, um, a culmination of many different experiences in order to be able to really give um, a, a valid decision. You have to have the um, academic capacity. You have to have compassion. You have to be able to listen to how the case is presented and the facts on any particular case. So there's just not one one thing. But I, I believe I bring all of those abilities to this position. Excellent. Um, you and your opponent are seeking to replace Judge Richard Brosi, Brosi who is retiring. Uh, could you assess his time on the bench? What do you respect about his approach and how would yours be different, if at all? Well. Um, I did have many cases in front of uh, Judge Brosey when I was in Lewis County, but I was also in front of a variety of, of judges. So the majority of cases I had in front of Judge Brosey were entry-level felony because that's what I was doing when I first came here. I did not do the more violent crimes, 
until I got to Jefferson County. So he was always uh, very fair. I appreciated how he um, knew what was happening uh, before he took a seat on the bench. He knew the facts of our cases. Um, he knew the law and that kind of organized thinking and fairness I would like to replicate. Excellent. Um, how important do you feel endorsements are in a race for a judicial post and what one single endorsement that you've got do you think best represents your qualifications for the office? Well, I think that locally um, I'm not going to get any endorsements from local attorneys and or judges and I understand that. I um, respect the fact that they don't know my work because they haven't seen me for about 10 years. I mean, I've been practicing in other places and so all of my endorsements come from individuals who either are attorneys in Cowlitz County and of course you can look them up and talk to them and see what kind of attorneys they are um, and ask them. But I'm not expecting any endorsements locally. So the um, local endorsements that I do have come from community members, church leaders, um, individuals who know my character. They may not know my expertise as an attorney. If you want to know about that, talk to those lawyers. But if you want to know about me as a person, um, I feel confident with any of the names on that list. Excellent. Um, there are many jobs in the legal field that pay a whole lot more than a superior court judge. Uh, why aren't you pursuing something more financially lucrative? I did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had that. But this job as a judge is so important for the citizens here in Lewis County. You deserve a judge who has experience in various areas of law. You deserve someone who's gone to trial over a hundred times. You deserve someone who understands mental health hearings. You deserve somebody who has made mistakes, learned from them, and improved. And you can't do that instantaneously, and that's why I'm running, because I believe the citizen student deserves a attorney and on the bench who's been there and done that and will hear what's happening with you. Um, if you're elected, how long would you plan on maintaining the office or at least pursuing re-election? Um, do you have future plans beyond this, or would this be a destination career for you? Well, since I'm not um, under 20, <laughs> um, putting it nicely, I, I would expect this would be my um, final career. And just for pacing, you're, you're ahead, I mean, it's fine to be succinct, but you have just uh, two questions left, and then you have your open time. <laughs> um, but it's good, you're, you're fine, I mean, it's totally fine. Just wanted to let you know how much time you have okay. to work with. You don't have to fill the whole 30 minutes. Um, does your opponent have any specific weakness that makes you a better candidate overall? My understanding of the judicial canons is I should not be commenting on my opponent at any level. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Um, the last question is uh, a little less substantive, but what's the most interesting facet of your life? We're thinking like a hobby, an experience, um, an area of interest unrelated to your credentials as a judge. I think uh, one of the proudest moments I've ever had was when I was working with West Coast Search Dogs. I had a dog named Pepper. She was a mixed breed Doberman Pinscher Golden Retriever. And we were getting ready to do a hot load. And a hot load is when the helicopter is going full throttle and you and your dog are supposed to get on that bird. And I had never done it before. And I'm wearing my helmet and the goggles and the full suit and my dog is wearing a choke chain. And that's it. And I asked the people around me, I, you know, I've never done this before. They said, just, just watch the people in front of you. You go in groups of three, it's not gonna be a problem. You see how it's done, okay. So, group of three starts up. My dog's just sniffing other dogs, not paying any attention. First dog goes to the first circle, freaks out, runs away. Uh-oh. Second dog gets to the first circle, goes crazy, slips leash, runs away. Oh, great. We go to the first circle. Dog sits down. Man in a full flight suit comes up, taps me on the shoulder. Are you ready? And I look at Pepper, and her eyes are at half mass because the wind is so intense. And I go, Pepper, are you ready? And she stands up. And I said, we're ready. And I just looked at her the whole time. His hand is here. He takes me all the way to the plane. And I go up and into the helicopter. 
she goes, and I got two thumbs up from the pilots. It was the only dog that made it on that hot load at that speed that day. And I was very proud of her. So that's a very um, unrelated <laughs> thing. Yeah, but it's very interesting. And it was a wonderful experience. I uh, wish I was still young so I could keep doing things like that. But um, I don't do that anymore. But it was a, a wonderful experience. And I still contribute to search and rescue. And um, we had Callitz County, uh, not this most recent one, but about four years ago, had a uh, hosted the Washington Association of Search and Rescue, OISAR. And we did courtroom testimony on, for dog handlers, how all of those notes you have to take from all those mock searches that you do qualifies your dog when it finds evidence or, you know, somebody in a, a criminal situation. Excellent. So. Well, because of how you budgeted your time, you've got a little <laughs> extra uh, to work with as far as a closing statement. So if there's any issues we didn't bring up or anything you want to discuss, that's great. Otherwise, you can treat it as a, a final appeal to the voters. Well, um, I think I'll let it go as a, a final appeal. I hope that um, my succinct answers, or my short little answers, are still sufficient for you to be able to make a clear and educated choice in who you would like to have on the bench in Lewis County Superior Court, position number three. Thank you. Thank you.